Hello, Glitch Reaper here. I'm here for something that's kind of be a bit explorative to a degree. I'm here in 18W43C. <laughs> yeah, that, that just worked out well. Uh, and I swear I have no idea why I keep finding uh, uh, seeds that spawn you on an island, because this is actually where I showed up. <laughs> but hey, when it's a talent, it's a talent. So whatever works. Anyhow. Uh, the thing is that there's many aspects to the Village and Pillage update, some of which have to do with expanded dye work and herb lore. So, if, for those of you who like doing a dye work and herbology in Minecraft, kind of like I do, then this is definitely going to be something you'll want to know about. Uh, for one thing, they've really changed how dyes are going to be, and for that they've kind of did some rebalancing. And speaking of rebalancing, you may notice a few textures different, because these are kind of the new standard. Again, if I don't feel like I like them that much, I'll probably get a texture pack or something eventually that kind of goes back to classic. Uh, but the, there will be some new items that'll just have their own default texture starting out, so that'll just be that. Anyhow, we have some new flowers, and we have some new dye things, and we have some stuff that works with both in some interesting ways. So let's get on to a bit of how this uh, reformatting works. It should be noted that the lapis, bone meal, ink sacks, and cocoa beans no longer can be used directly as dyes, but can be crafted into their corresponding color that they've always been used for. So you get blue dye from lapis lazuli, white dye from bone meal, black dye from ink sacks, and a brown dye from cocoa beans. Uh, there's also some new flowers that can be crafted into these dyes. Now you get this corn flower here. It can be found mainly in, in uh, plains biomes. You have the lily of the valley, which apparently is found mainly in forests. Probably better chance in flower forests if you can find one. And we have the wither rose. If this was just normally placed down in the world, it would actually wither you for a little bit. Uh, or mobs, for that matter. In fact, let me see if I can find a little victim here. Hello? Oh, this is going to be sad. But kind of has to be done. <coughs> Yeah, just showing that works. And yes, it does have its own particle effect. Uh, but uh, yeah, the thing about it is that means that uh, that can actually affect even a lot of undead. Because other than wither skeletons and the wither, not very many are actually immune to that. So that's a general mob slayer right there. As long as you can get them to stand wherever the flower is, they will eventually just wither away. So that thing is dangerous. And it's caused by the wither, because to get it, you have to basically let a wither go ahead and slay some non-undead creature. It'll either be fallen in the world or uh, already planted, but either way, it has a special property in addition to the withering that it's completely immune to the wither's explosions. It will never be destroyed by them, so kind of a special new wither-related artifact here. As you could imagine, and I've got these lined up, you can tell which ones they get crafted into. Uh, if you're doing it for dye work. This thing you'll probably want to use for mob work, but it's a special case. Now, the uh, corn flower can go into blue dye directly, the lily of the valley goes into white dye directly, and the wither rose, if you care to part with one, will go into black dye. Although I see no reason why you'd want to use this version of the recipe, because it's so much easier to get ink sacks whenever oceans are usually pretty available. I mean, sure, I don't have anything spawning in right now, but it's usually pretty easy to either find an ocean or another aquatic biome to get ink. So that's still going to be your easier way of getting black dye. Now, th this bamboo in this flower pot here is just to remind me of the fact that you normally get your cocoa beans in a jungle biome. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, they'll be crafted into brown dye, so yeah. <laughs> that was just an interesting reminder of where to go. Uh, now, another thing about your expanded herb lore and dye work is uh, we have some interesting stuff over here. On the subject of dyes, we have a new block called the Loom. I've seen some sort of similar things in mods before, but nothing specifically meant to do what it does. It, it and uh, yeah, but 
you just need a couple of planks of any sort and a couple of strings. So it's very simple to make. And its main purpose is to help you with doing banners. Uh, and the thing is, is that the old recipes for banners uh, and doing their patterns are kind of removed in this version. So that means even if you have memorized a lot of that like I have, it's not going to work that way anymore. It'll work mainly through this block. So that's very important. And I'm going to do a quick live test here to see if you can still duplicate banners uh, in the classic way. Also, I might just use this to reveal the fact that they uh, can't use their old way of doing things. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm grabbing a few special items here, including something else that you may need to craft. And I'm just going to kind of illustrate the point that uh, there's no such thing as, let's say, putting a dot on the banner anywhere. See, you, 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 it, it doesn't even affect it. Like, if you wanted to put the little thing at the top, no. And it, one guy usually wouldn't do that anyhow, but I'm just kind of showing that that wouldn't work. And you can't combine the new item for doing patterns on them with them directly. You have to go everything through the loom now. So, yeah, that's kind of a specialty thing. Although it does illustrate things pretty well to give you a good showing of how things are going to work uh, and a way of previewing and everything. You still have to start out with a banner of the color of your choice. And you put it in the slot that obviously looks like a banner. Now, after that, you do have this palette here. And this will show you all the different uh, patterns available, uh, very classically, with the uh, white area representing the color you're about to receive. If you click on that, then it'll give you your preview over here and everything. Now, there's also the thing of making these banner patterns. Now, a quick test. I want to see if these items stay in here or not. Nope, but they are instantly returned to you, which is interesting, actually. It, 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 I don't even think that that uh, dropped on the ground. Of course, nowadays, crafting tables do that, too. It's just sort of a thing that's still getting used to because new versions. But as for what this thing is, this is a banner pattern. They're only for the specialty patterns, the ones that needed additional items other than dyes. They're crafted... Sort of as you'd expect, and with the with whatever item that you were originally meant to make it with, plus a piece of paper, and you get the uh, special pattern. Now they don't have any distinct look of their own otherwise, but trust me, they are go going up perfectly there. <laughs> it just looks the same at the end. Uh, so yeah, oxy daisies for the flower charge, creeper heads for the creeper face, wither skulls and skulls for the. Uh, skull and crossbones and of course for the mojang symbol you have an enchanted golden apple still which is uh still ridiculous because now those are harder to get because you can't craft them by default so yeah but it's a good thing the pattern is never used up when you use it in the loom so this becomes completely catalytic in making the pattern it's just like you just need to have it here in the interface and whatever it is that you wanted will be fine for example if I wanted to put this uh, flower pattern in here, then it'll automatically shove me over here to this pattern where I have the kind of the a sun-like symbol behind because I chose orange dye to go with it. And yeah, this is your, again, this is your dye slot. But this means while I'm building this, it will uh, pop out over here. So it's just showing me uh, this here. Now you just click uh, the banner out as you'd kind of usually do with a crafting table to extract it. And it does give you a little preview here of what your banner is about to look like. It does do it up to six layers like with standard banner crafting. They have not lifted that rule yet. Uh, personally, I'm hoping that for people who forget the old patterns and are switching back and forth between versions, uh, that the uh, website for making banners, the Minecraft banner generator, still keeps that in mind going, oh, if you're doing it this way, please remember to craft it this way. <laughs> that, that would be nice. Anyhow, ah, and it has a special effect sound. Now, I've already done the flower charge that I wanted, but remember that I said that it does these patterns like this? Well, the thing about it is that it now uses one die for any pattern. You don't have to do like a line of three to make, the, uh, oh, say, a vertical line through it. So if I were to, oh, say, do this, then it gets the white streak ready. And you can, it sounds kind of like putting paint on an easel. 
kind of, which is appropriate. Or, but I know it's the loom, but still. Yeah, I mean that's what it sounds like to me. And you can kind of maybe hear a faint sound of it transitioning between pages. Okay, it sounds a little more like a loom to me there. But anyhow, you may have uh, seen this as, as my symbol. I did design this in Minecraft a while back. Uh, so, and I, 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 it has more than one meaning to me, but... Oh, that's a weird glitch. I had to go this way. Okay. Uh, I, I kind of forgot about that. Uh, maybe... Oh yeah, I was just aiming here. I wasn't aiming like on the ground or something. So yeah, that, 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 was, a, that was a thing. There we go. <laughs> So yeah, my my usual uh, classic Minecraft banner that that I like using. Now, just as a quick trick to see if this is still working, can I copy it? Yep, you can still copy banners as you could before. You just uh, can no longer do the basic patterning uh, by crafting. You have to use the loom. It does look pretty cool actually, and I can kind of show off the model a bit more. Uh, let me see if I can put this in mid-air somehow. Uh, well, I have trees that I can just partially destroy. That could happen. Or I could do this. I could put it on top of a flower. Yeah, there we go. Okay, but yeah, it, it clearly has a front and back side to a degree. Well, kind of. It has like around, this, uh, like the, it has basic sides and then it has clearly the area that's the front here. And it, ha it clearly has an, a top that looks like a loom. And below, it's kind of just a bit like a coruscated plank pattern. So it, it, it definitely has an interesting model that's completely thought out as to how it should look. So something tells me they've been thinking of this one for a while. Because they were saying they wanted to make banners better and easier to do. So this is definitely the solution that they came up with. And it apparently had been a long time waiting. Now, we also have something else more for the herb lore section going on, like you know now about the new flowers and uh, what uh, they do in terms of dyes, but there's now new uses for all flowers regardless. And this gets kind of int well, not all flowers as far as I know, but a good portion of flowers. Let's put it that way, okay? Uh, th there may be something they missed. I think they did it pretty well, so I'm pretty sure that going onward they'll always keep flowers in mind for this one recipe. And it's very special. It's Suspicious Stew. Now, to craft Suspicious Stew, you may notice that it looks kind of like you're doing regular mushroom stew. But then you throw in a flower. That's all you need to do to change it into Suspicious Stew. And it has a different texture than regular mushroom stew. You can kind of see little uh, particle things like floating around in the stew which makes it look extra, well, suspicious. Well, the thing is that what flower you use determines a special effect that's embedded in it. Otherwise, the uh, hunger and saturation value is kind of like mushroom stew. And I don't know if you can eat it whenever your hunger is already full. So it may not be as useful as, oh, say, a golden apple, which you can eat at all times or something like that. Like, for example, like chorus fruit will always help you teleport around when you need it. But this is one of those things that it may just be uh, whenever you happen to have the opportunity. Although, let me, let me see if I can do this correctly. Still remembering the new, uh, the new thing here. Okay, can I... Nope, you cannot eat it while your hunger is full, as I was saying before. So just saying that uh, does not work. <laughs> so it is not as convenient as doing it in uh, it, as like a golden apple or something, or a potion for that matter. It does give you a potion effect of kind of your choice, but it's for a very short amount of time. You can't like make it any stronger, so you don't get level two of anything, and it's only something that can be eaten along with a or obtained along with a normal food item type rule. So, yeah. Now, as for the list of special effects, I have made one here in this handy book and quill. Okay. Now the effects go as follows. If you put in a wither rose, you can wither with it, and 
remember these things have no visual difference. So if somebody wants to prank somebody really badly, yeah, that would do it. Alongside Lily of the Valley, which grants poison. And <laughs> these are in the categories of things you would not want to give yourself. Uh, any tulip, uh, any, any tulip at all gives weakness. Again, bad thing. Azure Bluette gives blindness. Now, amongst these four, first four negative effects, you may notice that this is the first time anything made by the player, uh, other than a mob, like you know, other than the whip, uh, uh, no, other than a mob, this is the first time a player can specifically craft or create an item that gives these effects. Uh, so that is a bit different. And kind of a new thing. Now, as for positive effects, you can give yourself jump boost with corn flowers. Oxy daisies give you regeneration, uh, so that's nice for an extra boost on top of you know helping yourself for your food. So, alliums give fire resistance. So if you know you need to cross a little bit of lava, but not a lot of lava, that would be kind of handy. Uh, poppy gives you speed, and either blue orchids or dandelions give you saturation. Yeah, saturation. That effect has not been granted in survival until now either. And it's kind of ridiculous that you can even do that, because just a second or two of saturation will max out your food bar and your hidden saturation bar. So even just like a second or two of that is enough to max you out. This means if you have suspicious stew with either a blue orchid or a dandelion in the recipe, you max out your bars almost instantly or at least in a matter of seconds, and that will hold long enough for your natural regeneration from having your saturation maxed out to get you a pretty good portion of the way up. So this is actually like vanilla's version of a superfood where you just get maxed out in one shot. So that's actually kind of amazing. Again, I've been kind of noting that uh, vanilla actually wants to be have, having a few things on par with, uh, with, with or better than mods for certain things. And for a superfood, that's kind of amazing, because you have any idea how easy it is to do that? I mean, it's just a couple mushrooms, a bowl, and a dandelion. That's kind of ridiculous. And you get the bowl back, so all you need to do is get the other ingredients again, and you're good to go. <laughs> that's just, It's like, really? But hey, I, it's, it's something that's just plain awesome, and something that not everybody would immediately think to do. So it's, And also, like you kind of have to know that they are associating the dandelion with real life, because you actually can eat dandelions, they just take a little preparation. Well, in this case, the preparation is just throwing them to mushroom stew. Uh, now, you may notice one little thing I didn't bring to your attention here before. Do you notice a slight error? That's because I said suspicious stewy, not stew. Now the thing is, notice where my cursor's going? Uh, yeah, we have something completely new here, uh, but something everybody wanted. <laughs> uh, it's called, we can now edit books in the middle of the books or wherever we put it. We don't have to go all the way back by erasing the whole thing to go up. <laughs> so we don't have to rewrite things anymore. That's just a little extra I wanted to show off with this because more than a few people will probably do what, like what I just did and literally take notes on this soup because it will probably be decently complex over time. And people will have to remember, well, what do I put in to get this effect? So that's right, just take notes. <laughs> and that's pretty much it for this uh, section of Village and Pillage because I just thought this all went thematically together with the whole new dye work and herb lore expansion and things like that. And of course, well, both with new flowers and something to actually put those flowers to good use. And not just as dye, which is already a good use, or for, for that matter, a few other things here and there, but this is a really useful item that makes really good use of natural resources. So I thought that was pretty cool that they even did that. So, yeah. Thank you very much for now. For now, this has been uh, Glitch Reaper. I'll be uh, logging off. Hope to hear from you all later, so bye for now, everybody.